Technical Growers talk that I'll be talking about is making the switch to organic. Transition to organic production involves changes from conventional production. Biggest change is the type of substrate used and its key components. Understanding compost and the process of the composting. Understanding biomass. The biggest change, the type of substrate, is the compost or understanding compost. Okay. Uh, our, our main component is still peat moss, uh, which will greatly assist in the aeration and drainage and porosity. But now we have to start concentrating on, on the compost, type of compost, the quality of the compost, and the understanding of the biomass, which is just a microorganism found in the compost. Okay. Organic fertilizers versus conventional fertilizers. Many times when we have people switching from conventional to organic, their expectations greatly diminish in the fact that the comment would be, well, when I used 2010-20, my seedlings used to green up real fast. Now that I'm using organic, how come you got, you know, how come if they're not, they're actually yellow and they're not greening up fast enough? We will get into why that occurs as we move along. So compost and composting, biological decomposition of organic materials by microorganisms under aerobic conditions. Uh, I do have available a separate PowerPoint, which actually talks more or gets into the actual composting, composting process. It explains like the, the three types of insect levels and biodegraders that are there to give you a better understanding of the whole compost product. So that, that can be made available also if you want to adapt, okay? So end result is a relatively stable humus-like material. So you can see that the energy has to go in here. Then we have our first set of degraders or insect degraders. Naturally you have water, heat, and carbon dioxide given off till we get to a mature compost, a uniform mixture of decomposed organic matter, minerals, microorganisms, and they all have to, like any type of mix, whether it's organic versus just a standard mix, they have to meet specific standards and criteria okay, before they actually are then sold as one of our OM line mixes, organic mixes. Okay. This is just to show you the feedstock comparisons uh, if we're using types of manure. And as, as you can see, the actual, the low NPK in many of them. Okay, so the whole idea there is that what they're doing is they're, they're, they're supplying a source of energy to the microorganisms to continue the decomposition, but in the amounts that they're used and that, they're actually definitely, even when the microorganisms start to work, they're of such a low NPK that most people have to then go into more of a, what we would call a, a fertility program, depending on whether you were growing just a very short term, three to four week, three inch pot, selling it as a quick herb, or then if you're extending it into a long term production of a larger pot, or in a grow bag in tomato production or vegetable production. Carbon to nitrogen ratio. You always hear about the CN ratio, and, and basically uh, of the many elements required for my microbial decomposition, carbon and nitrogen are the most important. So we have to make those available and we have to make them available throughout the whole process. So the whole process of actual composting is, is, is to know that it has to be turned over, moisture has to be entered, temperatures have to rise to a thermophilic, through a thermophilic process to a specific degree and then drop down. Okay? So all this type of input is very important. Carbon provides both an energy source and the basic building block of microbial cells. Nitrogen provides the microbes with the raw element of protein to build their bodies and reproduce. Okay, people are saying, well, big deal, but this is a, this is a never ending process that has to be maintained and stabilized during the whole process of the co composting. Okay, so at any time, say the energy source, we're not doing our job right, the energy source decreases, the nitrogen decreases in that, the whole, the whole process could stop. Now, we know that just by the temperature. 
how the temperature rises, gets to its peak and comes down again. So if it doesn't reach that temperature, then we know that we're, in, we're actually in between the actual process and we could have stopped it and jeopardized it. So the monitoring of the compost pile during this is very, is very, very important. Okay. Many organisms use about 30 parts carbon for each part of nitrogen. An initial ratio of 31 promotes rapid composting. Okay. Biomass, most important thing. Biomass simply stated is the total mass of living organisms, fungus in a defined area. Where do we get the biomass? The biomass is the compost or in the compost. So we use the actual compost to inoculate the so-called mix with the biomass, okay. And then how much we treat or how much our water management so that uh, excess water leaves fast enough that oxygen comes back in, then actually affects the population and how big it gets, okay. So you'll have mixes that might start with 5% or 10, 6%, 10% compost. Other mixes that'll start as high as 30%, 40%, 50% compost. Well, right there, what you have to look at is the fact that you're dealing with two, two initial biomasses different than, than another. So we can't just say, okay, let's put 10% compost in this mix and it's gonna, it's gonna start or be in the same as someone who says you something with 30%, okay. Fungi perform important functions related to water dynamics nutrient cycling and disease suppression. Healthy biomass is critical to the success of an organic substrate. So you might start with a very good biomass and you're very happy, but you have a person who at the end of the water hose just loves to water, 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 then all of a sudden starts to create what we call a, a semi-anaerobic conditions, much less oxygen. Not gonna to totally kill the population, but they're gonna bring down the population, okay? As with any mix, the pH, the EC, CEC, and CN ratio is a vital balance of the nutrient as well as the overall health. And, and the biomass is greatly affected by changes. Uh, certain microorganisms, they, they, they like to live in a very definite pH. Okay? That's why the good thing about having like a, a biomass or a several composted feeds, like your feedstock to start it composted, has, has a blend of multi-strains so that you'll have strains that are more beneficial at one pH, another one at another pH. You wanna make sure that you're stabilizing a pH where everything is gonna work, okay? This EC, salts get too high, like if we're all thinking about feeding and heavy feeding and the salts get too high, they are definitely gonna affect the actual performance and the viability of the microorganisms in, in the mix, okay? chemical this this is uh, organic fertilizers are substances containing nutrients derived from the remains or byproducts of an organism chemical fertilizers are synthetically produced plants nutrients from inorganic materials and and uh, this is where the association stops but we have to do understand that the microorganisms then take whether it be bat guana or any type of the so-called uh, drams fish emulsion, the microorganism takes that element and breaks them down into the actual inorganic or salt element of nitrogen before it's available to the plant. Okay. This is where when we have novice organic growers where they get very, uh, uh, how do you say, they're just not impressed because they'll just think that there's got to be a certain precharge in there that can carry the whole thing. And uh, that is basically true, like I said, for a very short term crop. But now that we're starting to get into guys wanting to grow greenhouse tomatoes, greenhouse vegetables on long term production and bags and that, we definitely have to start to understand the types of fertilizers that can be used, but not just that, how fast and how available they are. Okay, and I think you, even just from that list, if we were to go back right now on the internet and look up like bat guana and uh, a lot of these so-called organics, they are very low NPKs, okay. The one thing we do know is that many of them are called fast reacting, but that is still very slow compared to inorganic salts. 
and some are actually slow reacting and they are very slow reacting like bone meal if anyone thinks we're going to get a, a tremendous amount of immediate calcium from the bone meal it, it, it's just a long long process okay so understanding and being patient and, and actually developing a fertility program it you know in long-term production a fertility program is required you just can't say okay well heck I got 30% compost in there and I'm not, I don't have to touch because I do have people saying why can't we just let what you put in there do its job you can but then understand just like regular fertilization the frequency of watering in between and even the frequency of the feeding in that does change the actual fertility status of the mix okay one aspect of organic fertilizers I mean I'll be honest it's a it has slow release capabilities uh, it has its pros and cons okay it's even like some people want to do acidification with citric acid the actual acidification to maintain the pH citric acid works well but it it, it has to be used in high amounts and it works slow so you're not going to get the same immediate but as long as you understand that and then create a monitoring program known how slow it works then you could react to it faster so it's the same as with the fertilizers knowing that they're not going to green up overnight a lot of people do basil and basil loves fertilizer and so you either have to say like with our organic mixes we do have you have the option of adding additional PNF pelletized nutrient fertilizer at the beginning so you can go from one rate up to triple the rate knowing what effect it might have uh, on, on, on what crop you grow okay <coughs> chemical fertilizers can provide plants with an immediate source of nutrients <coughs> I'm dealing with guys that are now growing tomatoes on a long term and we are trying to figure out how available we can make uh, make nutrients uh, I myself uh, find that using the actual like uh, earthworm tea from a digested compost it's working good on plants that are demanding a much higher source in a shorter period of time uh, and but then again when we're talking tomatoes just like conventional tomato production we know that we need one type of source during the vegetative we need one source for the flowering and one source a change I should say not one source but a change in the source and the change in the NPK ratios we need that in a pretty well in three different times of the growing period so it's not to say that we're going to take a, a 10 gallon pail put a tomato plant in it with with 30 percent compost and think that 12 months later it's going to sustain itself okay so organic growing is not as magic as we think sometimes it is it is a production system that has to be fully understood okay